Let's get something out of the way immediately. Picking numbers is not a silver bullet for the GRE. It's more like a silver gun. Useful to have in the right circumstances, but not something you want to use all the time. I used smart numbers maybe 10 times on the test, and it did help me get the 340. That's why I made this video to show you when and how to use this amazing weapon. If you're a student who has never picked numbers, this video is especially for you. First, I'm going to show you an example that represents the perfect situation in which to pick numbers. Then I'm going to show you a borderline case where it's just as easy to solve the question as it is to pick numbers. Then I'm going to show you the worst case scenarios when you definitely shouldn't pick numbers. The official guide to the GRE describes this strategy as trial and error or finding a pattern. Sometimes you'll see in explanations the advice just to plug in numbers. You might ask why and how and when or even who. No, you wouldn't ask who, that wouldn't make sense. But you would definitely ask why, when and how. First off, why would we ever even pick numbers? Sometimes under the time pressure of the exam, we can't think of the right approach to use. It happens to all of us, it happens to me. Maybe we can't see how the algebra is gonna factorize or we just can't simplify that exponent. Maybe we're just straight up baffled. In these situations, trying out some actual numbers instead of just relying on abstract concepts can really help our brain to get moving. So, are you ready? Have you got your seatbelt on? Because I'm about to show you three real examples. First, the perfect case. X is an integer greater than zero. Quantity A is two to the power of X plus one. And quantity B is three to the power of X. By the way, this question is almost identical to the one found on page 166 of the official guide. But why is picking numbers perfect for this question? Because there's virtually nothing you can do to solve it algebraically. How would you even solve that? You can't simplify either quantity. There's no obvious mathematical truth that we can just observe to get the answer. The challenge is simply to find out which quantity is bigger and is it always bigger or only sometimes bigger. Okay, so we know we need to pick numbers, but how do we pick numbers? The answer is pick extremes. For example, it would be a bad idea in this example just to pick two random integers like two and three and throw them in and make a conclusion based off that. As you can see on the screen, if we replace x with a two, we get eight is less than nine. And if we replace x with a three, we get 16 is less than 27. So you would probably conclude that quantity b is always bigger, right? The problem is our numbers were too close together. We didn't pick the extremes. What would the extremes be? Well, the question said that x had to be an integer greater than zero. So the smallest integer x could be would be one. That's the smallest extreme. Now x on the other extreme could be a thousand or a billion, but that's too hard for this question. So why don't we just pick something like four? You can see that when we plug in one, we actually get that quantity a is bigger four is bigger than three. But when we plug in four, which is quite a different number to one, much bigger in this situation, then we get that indeed quantity B can be bigger than quantity A as we saw earlier. So by picking these extreme values, we can clearly see that the answer is D. There is no clear relationship. Sometimes quantity A is bigger, sometimes quantity B is bigger. I hope that clarified a great example of when to pick numbers. You can't solve it, so you just plug in smart numbers. And we plugged in numbers that are relatively far apart and different from each other. By the way, at this moment, I must say, if you're finding the video helpful in any way, please like or comment. And thank you to all those people who have already liked and commented. I can't believe I'm already on 120 subscribers just a weekend, so thank you. Okay, now it's time for the borderline case. We could solve this one properly, or we can pick numbers. Both methods are about as fast as each other. X plus Y equals minus two. Which of the following statements about X and Y must be true? Indicate all such statements. X is greater than Y. X, Y is less than zero. Two X plus two Y plus four 
equals zero. So how would we solve this properly or logically? Well, you'd look at the first statement that says x is bigger than y, and hopefully you might realize that there's no reason one of the numbers x has to be bigger than the other one. Why can't y be bigger than x? That's kind of a logical inference you could make. Now, don't worry if you heard that and you were like, well, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's the point of picking numbers, which we're about to get to. But I'm just showing you how you might have thought about this logically. For the second statement, x, y is less than zero. That only applies if one of the letters is less than zero and the other one is greater than zero. But in this situation, there's no reason why both letters can't be negative. For example, x could be a small negative fraction and y could be a bigger negative fraction. So we can't say for sure that x, y is less than zero because they could both be negative and two negatives multiply to get a positive. Finally, for the third statement, again, using logic and inference without picking numbers, we could shift the minus two across to the other side in the original equation and get x plus y plus two equals zero. And then just realize that the third statement is that equation multiplied by two. x plus y plus two equals zero. If you times it by two becomes two x plus two y plus four equals zero. So the third statement must be true because it's the same as the original equation. Now, instead of that logical approach, we could have picked numbers. For example, if x plus y equal minus two, then it could be that x equals minus one and y equals minus one as well. That's the most obvious set of numbers to pick. You might also think of x being minus two and y being zero. That also makes sense. With those numbers in mind, we can already see that statement one can't be true. If x is minus one and y is minus one, then x is not bigger than y. So we've eliminated statement one. And we've eliminated statement two, because if x is minus one and y is minus one, then when you multiply them, you don't get a negative, you get plus one. So statement two's out. Plugging x is minus one and y is minus one into the third equation gets you a correct result. Two times minus one plus two times minus one plus four does indeed equal zero. And if you tried any other numbers, for example, x is minus two and y is zero, you would also find that the third equation holds true. So therefore we would conclude on the basis of the numbers we picked that the third equation is true. Of course, you could also infer that the third equation had to be true because none of the others were. This shows you that sometimes picking numbers is just as good as solving it logically. One is not better than the other in all circumstances. Some of the students watching this would say, oh, picking numbers is so much easier. I could just think of a couple of examples and I get it instantly. Other people watching will say, I prefer the logical approach. It doesn't seem safe to pick numbers. I would say to those people, look at the first example. Sometimes it genuinely is easier to pick numbers. And I'd say to the people who love picking numbers, watch out for the example we're about to get to. Picking numbers isn't a panacea for every single question. Are you ready for the worst case scenario? We're gonna see our little numbers shuffle into a shed and there's someone with a GRE chainsaw getting ready to destroy them. And by destroying these numbers, it's gonna destroy every single minute we have left on the test. So this is the type of question where you do not pick numbers. Here it is. But why is this such a terrible question to pick numbers on? Because you can solve it. It's so much quicker to solve a question if you can quickly rearrange it, factorize and solve it. Also with the fact that you can see 7.2 in the answer, it suggests that picking numbers is gonna involve a lot of mental arithmetic or furious clicking on the calculator. Let's leave that behind. In general, equations are less favorable for picking numbers simply because the numbers you have to pick have to make both sides balance out. In general, when there's an equation, try to solve it by factorizing instead of picking numbers. So how would we solve it? First, you'd bring the seven across, you'd equate the equation to zero, and then you'd have a go at factorizing. We now need two numbers that multiply to get plus seven and add to get minus eight. As seven's a prime number, that's gonna have to be seven and one, specifically minus seven and minus one to get it to add up to minus eight. With our double brackets, this becomes x minus seven, x minus one equals zero, and the solutions become x equals seven and x equals one. 
if quantity a, which is x, is always 1 or 7, then quantity b, which is 7.2, by definition has to be bigger than either of those. So the answer would be b. I'm not going to spend too much time on how we factorize because that's maybe a video for another day. I just wanted to emphasize the point that not all occasions are perfect for picking numbers. You've seen the first example, which was perfect for picking numbers. You couldn't solve it in any way. You couldn't simplify. Just throw in some numbers by picking extreme values and Bob's your uncle, we've got the answer. The next situation, the borderline scenario, you could pick numbers or you could solve it logically. If you see how to solve it logically, that might be slightly quicker, but picking numbers is a safe alternative. But with the third example, the worst case scenario, picking numbers wouldn't have helped at all. It would have taken a lot of time, like that GRE chainsaw, cutting away our minutes for the test. So instead, it's an equation we can solve, so we moved it across, factorized and solved it. So let that be the lesson. Sometimes it's appropriate to pick numbers, sometimes it isn't. And I hope this video has shown you some of the ways in which it is appropriate and is not appropriate. I hope you've learned a lot about this crucial skill of picking numbers. And if you have, please like the video, please comment, please subscribe. I read all the comments and try to reply to all of them. So thank you again. Have a great day.